My name is Wim Montoya. I'm 14 years old. I'm from the Netherlands and from the Swinomish tribe. I went to the Indigenous Peoples Global Summit on Climate Change. It was held in Anchorage, Alaska on April 19th to the 24th. I went to research and collect data and bring research back to our community and to film. There is a bunch of people from all over the world. Kenya, Brazil, Mexico, Germany, and Norway. There's a lot of people I met that I thought were inspirational. Climate change means that all the things you thought were true are no longer. It means manipulation of our resources by the business community. It means uh, exploitation of our, of our lives. It's, it's a signal, it's a sign of a lifestyle of industrialized countries that is not sustainable. We've deviated, you know, from respecting the land, from respecting the animals, from respecting the water, from respecting the air, and even from respecting one another as human beings. And deviating from that place uh, of respect has resulted in us doing things that is now negatively impacting the environment around us. Some of the examples I heard at the summit were there will be no polar bears and water was the boss and like it'll start rising and if you live on the island you'll be underwater. The earth is changing and getting warmer and it is affecting all the communities. We are here to say that climate change is affecting uh, indigenous people. In the phrase global warming it is already implies that it's getting warmer but we would like to be cold, we are arctic people. It's shifting how I see ourselves as um, a people. The world is changing, and because of that change, because of that change, we have to suffer, which we're not supposed to yeah. suffer. And this is this is man-made. It's not it's not nature. This is what we've done to nature. Some of the major issues being discussed at the summit were the cars producing gases and stuff like that into the air, and it's causing it. It is important for indigenous people to know what global climate change is because if they don't know what it is, then when it happens, they're not gonna know what to do or, what, or how it was caused. The major issues are continuing to raise awareness on the disproportionate impacts on indigenous peoples, our lands, our ways of life, yet we're not the major contributors to the carbon emissions. So it's an issue of uh violation of our rights, uh, the issue of injustices. Uh, we're calling for responsibility and accountability for those countries who uh, continue to emit greenhouse gas emissions to the atmosphere. We think that it's important to put our view in of how we're being affected by climate change and also the policies that are being developed to solve climate change. So we want to make sure that real solutions to climate change are what's being pushed by indigenous peoples. For us, it's, it's good to listen and hear what the experience is from other indigenous people all over the world and to share uh, that experience. And as we see here, it, we have a very common experience. So we're here to help out, to learn, to listen, and to contribute in any way we can. Now that I attend the summer, I'm going to take the advice that was given to me and use it. As you learn about what's happening around you in the world or in your community, to engage with that, but in a way that's healthy for you, not to become overwhelmed by it or, or, or have it be something that drags you down because, you know, being creative and having fun is such an important part of life. Even though you can also have your moments of, of serious hard work, you know, in your own education, your own learning, your own growth. I really hope that more non-native allies come um, um, near us and around us and let us take the lead in protecting the planet but um, a gather around us as support for our um, vision and direction on protecting the earth. Probably the best part for me was to listen to what they had to say and I learned that global warming was a man-made conflict, not naturally. We could stop it and we should 